Chinese or People's Republic of China is close to parity with the U.S. militarily and economically. If so, what's the U.S.'s strategy to prevent or win a conventional war with China? Hi folks and welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. During Xi Jinping's recent speech to the delegates of the parliamentary meeting, he stated, China's back and after a century of struggle, the Chinese nation's great revival is on an irreversible path. As the Chinese communists have now become a global power with its ever-reaching tentacles spreading worldwide from the South Pacific to South and Central Asia, throughout the Middle East and Latin America, this would mean a U.S. global engagement when confronting China militarily. If this scenario became a conventional shooting war with communist China, what would be the U.S.'s course of action in deterring or winning it? In this scenario, the assumptions are that nuclear attack is off the table for both the U.S. and the PRC. Also, the U.S. is led by a pragmatic president who understands how to execute the dime effectively. The DIME, or Diplomacy, Information, Military, and Economic, is an acronym that represents the instruments of national power and the cornerstone of the U.S.'s ability to engage and or win a war with an enemy. The first U.S. instrument power, Diplomacy, has been exhausted and failed to deter conflict with China. It's being effectively utilized to encourage and solicit support from allies from around the world and to build strong alliances. U.S. major allies in the Pacific are Australia, Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines, who will engage China if necessary. A large forward U.S. military presence moves into Philippines and Australia to forward project military operations. Furthermore, negotiations with other Pacific regional countries have been secured for basing, supplies, or even seeking neutrality. The U.S. utilizes its second instrument of U.S. power, information. A critical information campaign is initiated both within the U.S. and around the world. In the third instrument of power, the U.S. exerts economic pressure to negate or marginalize China's economic power. The U.S. and its allies withdraws from all trade with China, freezes bank accounts, and nationalizes all PRC properties. To reduce the Communist Chinese's ability to wage war, the U.S. expands its naval presence in the Pacific. The Chinese Communists have a large naval presence there, and U.S. and Allied forces disperse geographically to protect against large-scale attacks. With U.S. naval basing rights sealed with the Philippines, selling nuclear submarines to Australia, and beefing up of sophisticated arms to Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, the U.S. has a unique opportunity to strike with impunity. The U.S. Navy moves to prevent China from delivering goods and products to the rest of the world, drying up their economy, as well as preventing delivery of weapons to their Axis allies. To achieve this objective, the U.S. controls the sea lanes in the South and East China Sea. The U.S. 7 fleets Carrier Strike Group in Japan blocks the South China Sea and 3rd Fleet's Carrier Strike Group from San Diego moves to block the East China Sea to the Pacific. The U.S. Navy's 4th Fleet Strike Group moves from Florida to the Philippine Sea to operate as a backstop to support the 3rd and 7th Fleets. And each Navy Carrier Strike Group consists of an aircraft carrier with 60 to 70 aircraft, a guided missile frigate, a nuclear submarine, two destroyers, a frigate, two submarines, and supply ships. The U.S. Air Force composition consists of F-22s, F-35s, F-15s, F-16s, and the U.S. Marine Corps provides F-35s as well as a plethora of support aircraft. The primary U.S. targets are Chinese communist carrier bases Shandong and Sanya and Zhangjiang, Ningbo, Quindao Naval Headquarters, and a myriad of air bases. The U.S. Navy stealth F-35 strike Chinese naval vessels quickly before the Chinese brings its hypersonic weapons fully to bear on the U.S. fleet. The U.S. Air Force and Navy controls the skies with numerous U.S., Australian, Japanese, AWACS, and Navy 
Hawkeyes detecting all air movements and U.S. Air Force's F-22s quickly ensures their superiority while the U.S. Air Force and Navy's F-35s conduct both counter-air and air-to-ground operations to neutralize any immediate Chinese air, ground, and sea threats. The Communist Chinese have approximately 1,800 fighter aircraft and as many as 1,600 are fourth-generation aircraft which are quickly destroyed. Four deployed bomber fleets of B-52 and B-1 strike air base targets throughout China with standoff conventional weapons and utilize stealth B-2 or B-21 if fielded for unlimited deep penetration into Chinese territory to destroy war-making factories and military targets. In support of China, North Korea will engage South Korea with their long-range artillery and a massive ground assault across the 38th parallel. A combined U.S.-South Korean forces counteroffensive utilizing air attacks from the F-35s, F-16s, and F-16 CJs destroy North Korea's surface-to-air missile sites, AAA, and artillery pieces. U.S. Marines and Army airborne quickly supplement the Japanese and Korean peninsula until larger U.S. forces arrive. Meanwhile, sophisticated defensive and offensive weapons are provided to Taiwan and supplemented by U.S. forces. The U.S. engages China with cyber attacks and space assets, but isn't willing to use nuclear weapons unless China ratchets up the stakes by using their nuclear weapons. The scenario is highly doubtful due to the U.S.'s huge stockpile of 5,400-plus nuclear warheads compared to China's 350. Furthermore, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, the Patriot Advanced Capability of Pac-3 missile systems are deployed throughout the U.S., Australia, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, and Taiwan. NATO is tasked to negate Russia's ability to support China against the U.S. NATO forces moves ever closer to the Russian border. If Russia attacks NATO, their conventional military capability is destroyed in days, leaving only their huge nuclear stockpile. The conventional war with China ends quickly with the communist Chinese fleets, key Chinese coastal targets to include naval headquarters, naval shipyards, and air bases destroyed, and hundreds of aircraft shot down or destroyed on the ground. Unfortunately, this comes to a great cost to the U.S. Navy with several ships, which includes an aircraft carrier sunk by stealth aircraft, hypersonic missiles and submarines, and a loss of over a thousand personnel. Chinese communists are conducting irregular warfare activities during the short war. Such activities include hit-and-run attacks, raids and assassinations, as well as non-kinetic operations like cyber or information operations. Third columns of Chinese will infiltrate the U.S. to disrupt the war effort, but are eventually defeated. Let's hope that cooler heads will prevail before such a catastrophic event ever occurs. If it does, both sides will incur huge losses, but the U.S. and its allies would claim victory, setting China back decades economically and militarily. Hope you liked this video and it was educational to you. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to help it grow. Hit the bell to be notified of future videos. I'd really like to hear your thoughts, so leave your comments below. So until next time, make sure your takeoff and landings equal.